Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. This week you will see that I am sharing a, a video with you with a channel of Carrie Fisher. And in part, to go along with that, I'm also going to be doing in this video a channeling with her mom, Debbie Reynolds. All right, so this particular video is a live stream channeling with Debbie Reynolds. All right, so uh, I actually just listened back to and watched the video with Carrie, and that's what gave me this great idea to have a conversation with Debbie. So Debbie, can you come closer and get your energy in this space so I can feel it? I loved how genuine and just very um, sincere your energy felt when you're, I was talking to your daughter. Now I did the channeling with your daughter several weeks ago. I mean, it was, a, it was one of the very first uh, videos that I did when I started Above Life channel as far as um, recording. So I recorded it probably end of May 2018. So it's been a couple of months since that. So. Watching it back again was really um, moving to me. It was touching to feel you as part of the conversation, your energy there just to support your daughter. Now, I myself also have a daughter. Um, my daughter is the oldest of, of four that I have, my four children, and she is in one of those transitional states, you know, just entering her last year of high school and then going off to college, I hope. And we just went on our first college visit, so I'm like, Oh, you know, I was really nervous about it. I wasn't sure what to expect. And now she's really super motivated and hopeful about her future. And that to me is so inspiring. So I want to talk to you mother to mother, mom to mom. And I think it would be fascinating, Debbie, if you could share with us some advice about parenting, like share with me some advice about parenting, about being a mom, you know, Carrie has such a uh, a powerful strong woman energy and she was so young when she was discovered and when she was you know had her starring role in in Star Wars which is how I know of who she is and you were definitely a strong influence in her life as well so I, w I would love some parenting advice can you give me some of that <laughs> she's so sweet you guys she's like oh thank you you know she has like this gentle little laugh and it's kind of high it's like <laughs> and she feels um very sweet like so sweet really perky like smiley big big smile she has this really pretty face her I would describe um Debbie's features as soft her face is soft and she just looks she looks happy and I think it just means that perhaps authentically she just seems like a nice person like she seems nice like she cares and i i find that um i find that interesting because it seems like some of the people that i've connected with in spirit that are so connected to hollywood that were so in the biz like you debbie i mean you grew up in the biz I, uh, there's a different energy, like a, almost like things have been, like it's wearing you down, it wears you out, it prematurely ages you, it, it creates, you know, a lot of stress and pressure and it just, it, it really is a hard life, that Hollywood life is a hard life, that's kind of the impression I've been getting. And recognizing myself that that just seems like a difficult, you know, place to, to, to grow up for yourself, but also to raise kids and I know that you, you started out young yourself too, as you know, Carrie did, but you yourself started out young with um, roles. I think the one that I think of is the, um, the one where you had to dance, the Singing in the Rain one, I believe it was, and the Good Morning scene where you and the two other gentlemen that were with you in the movie climbed over this um, couch and kind of tipped it over and were dancing and that you just this this petite stature of yours and the you know the movement and the singing and the you know all that just compared to these two you know men that are just dancing around you I mean it just it was interesting to watch that and I remember that um, and you were so young too at that time so there's got to be so much here so 
All right, so I'm chatting a lot. I know I'm really, I'm kind of rambling because I'm not really sure how how to get to know you or create a bond with you aside from being a mom. So that's where I'm just going to focus. Being a mom, being a mom. I do feel a nervous energy with you. I think that's why I feel really chatty, like I'm nervously talking almost. So I feel this heart energy and I feel a lot of worry energy. Do you want to talk to me a little bit about where that's coming from, that worry energy? And she says, oh, being a mother. We always worry about our children. I, I think it's something that's born inside of us when they are born. M mothers just worry about their children. It's just how we are made. I think that's part of the process. And as they grow, we grow. And part of how we grow is through pain and struggles. You talked about that scene in Singing with the Rain, which grew me fast. That movie, I had no idea. I did not know anything about Hollywood and the, the rigor that was required. And I really worked hard and I struggled. And there was a lot of growing pain in the process. And I made an incredible amount of mistakes, which is probably why when I had my daughter young, that I only wanted, you know, the best for her. And yet I didn't know that the best would be Hollywood, but that's all she grew up knowing was that environment. And I did have some really wonderful people around me at times. And when I was able to, I had some really dear friends and she's referring to somebody, I think Joan, she's saying Joan or Joanne, J-O-A-N-N-E or J-O-A-N. I see a Joan or Joanne. Um, she's talking about some really good friends, like more than family, a uh, close group of friends. And then I see somebody else, she's calling Andy um, around as well. And then she mentions somebody named Pat. I don't know who that is. She's talking about someone helping her to be able to have her baby. Now, I'm feeling like you may have had your child young, like 24 years old or younger. It feels like young. And I remember from the first video when I talked about, when I talked with Carrie that um, her dad was famous. And I don't really know, or at the time I didn't know anything about Eddie Fisher really. I heard the name a lot, but I didn't really know. I guess he, now I know that he was a, a musician and uh, kind of a heartthrob type and maybe even a bad boy a little bit and maybe that's um, uh, maybe that's part of why the two of you weren't together I'm not sure but um, it feels like you weren't married to Eddie Fisher is that correct she says no Eddie and I never I don't feel like she and Eddie ever married I feel like she says never married but we were close we were together and it was sort of one of those things, you know, and you, you go on tour and you travel and you have a totally different life and that's the situation with Eddie. He had a completely different life when he was at home and with me and when he wasn't. And he had an image that was dependent, his success in his career was dependent upon his flirtation, you might say, and I never really blamed Eddie or felt like a victim. I really do look back on my life and take responsibility for my choices. And my children were good choices. They weren't things, they weren't um, just things I had to deal with. But, you know, Carrie, she was unexpected very much, but she really taught me so much about life and she taught me what it means to really love. And that is a gift I can never repay. Never, ever repay. She was my heart. So can you give me some advice and other moms that are watching 
I cannot even imagine you, you know, growing up in Hollywood, you know, having your daughters, your daughters growing up in Hollywood and you're living in Hollywood. I keep wanting to say you grew up in Hollywood and I'm not sure that that's true. That doesn't feel 100% true. I feel like you may have had some influence and somebody that either was in the business that brought you into the business or like a family friend or somebody in your family. Um, I feel like it wasn't too far of a reach for you to be in the business, show business. Um, I feel like it was kind of a natural step for you. Um, I also feel like you may have been like a, a beauty queen or something, like um, known for um, just um, being a beautiful, um, very pretty, a very, a very pretty face, very pretty. And um, that that gave you some opportunities as well. And you really feel sincere to me. You genuine, you feel like a genuine, very nice person. She's like, oh, thank you. Thank you, she says, thank you, that's very kind. That's so, that's so nice of you to say, she says, that's so nice of you to say. And I'm just drinking tea, and I felt like that was appropriate. Um, I had someone, I was talking to your daughter, so I thought it was a good idea to have some here as we're chatting. Give me some mom advice. <laughs> and she says, oh, I don't know if I'm qualified to give anyone advice. We'll talk a little bit about how, how you felt as a mother when your daughter in particular, I know you have other children as well, but because I've met Carrie, I feel like in the channeling process that um, it's easy to refer to her and to understand the relationship the two of you had, but how did you feel when she was going through her struggles, when she was dealing with her addictions and, and, and how did that af impact you or affect you? And she says, well, it affects you a great deal. It, it deeply worried me. I was very concerned about Carrie and that she was killing herself. She was basically killing herself. And it's really, it's hard, it's difficult to watch that. And the hardest points for me, the lowest points for me were when she pushed me away. That was the hardest. Those were the most difficult times in our relationship. Our relationship was tested many, many times over the years and somehow we always found each of our way back to each other and I credit that to just a natural bond. I think that mothers have, we must have some really special sacred bond with our children there must that must be god given and created and i am sure many of you can relate to that and understand that so when she was struggling it broke my heart and yet i had to be strong for her and knowing as i do we had been through addiction and she had been through treatment many times many times prior to her death, prior to her death, she was actually doing really well before her death. Or, or so we thought, you know, maybe just a few bumps in the road, but we thought she was in a good place or at least moving toward a, a better, you know, it's day, it is day by day, but working with addiction, anybody that has had anyone that has been a victim to the addiction cycle, will truly understand how much of a cycle it is. And it's hard to get off that merry-go-round and you ride it with your loved ones, you ride it with your friends, you ride it with your family, whoever is the addict, you ride that ride with them, but you, and you can't stop it, only they can. And it makes it, makes it so difficult to, it, it wears you down. You mentioned Bridget about how Hollywood or show business seems to wear on people. It seems to take away their their light or their their own happiness, uh, un unique to just being a happy person. And I believe that it's the it's actually the addiction part that steals that, that robs that from people. If they struggle with addiction in any way, or they're exposed to addictive patterns, whether it's binge eating or using hard drugs or 
alcohol or whatever it is that they're choosing to try to numb themselves there are so many ways now that people can do that and that is what i believe what i've seen in hollywood that's what changes people that's what takes away their luster that shine that's what takes it away it's that that incredible amount of pressure and you can only manage that so long you, you really have to consciously make a commitment to yourself to care for yourself in healthy ways and even then it's difficult there are so many influences and pressures that and, and i i know carrie early on had incredible amounts of struggle with image and with body image and with you know she became this sex symbol for 12 year old boys you know and men and everyone and she was so young at the time and you know the attention is overwhelming i mean at first it feels good but then you also get the negative and when the negative comments come and the feedback comes that it, you start to recognize that there's it's a double-edged sword and it was so hard for her to to grow up in that environment where she was expected to be this sex symbol as she grew older and to be taken as a serious actress or to be cast in any other role aside from this beauty and physical casting for her was something that was such a difficult hurdle to overcome. Eventually she just gave up on and almost rebelled against her body and in many, many ways. And that is something I could not have prepared her for. And that is something I couldn't have changed. And I think many mothers, you asked for motherly advice, I think many mothers have been in similar situations with their daughters. How can you prepare them for how others, society will view them based upon what they do? And how do you prepare them to deal with criticism? and the critics and I we've talked we talked about that Carrie and I, I mean I talked to her about that you know there's going to be critics there's going to be people that love you and people that hate you and it's going to be equal you know <laughs> it's going to be equal you know and to just tell someone not to pay attention to that isn't really enough to help you manage it and over time it it just it, it can overpower you and I'm not really sure if there's anything I could have done differently I think knowing how bad it was, really how deeply she was affected, maybe could have helped. But I mean, Carrie was always so strong, even as a little girl, she was always so strong. You talk about girl power or empowerment, Carrie definitely, and you picked up on that in the channeling. And when you talked with her and you did your channeling with her, you picked up on her strength. And that's what I saw when she was born, when she was little, you know, two years old. And, you know, I mean, she just like unstoppable. And so it's hard to believe that people who seem so strong and unstoppable, can be in so much per private pain and you know she wanted to protect me i think too so she didn't share half the the experience that she had with me because she didn't want to hurt me and she didn't want mom don't worry she would always say mom mom don't worry you d don't worry about me mom you can't waste your do not waste your time worrying about me do not lose do not lose any sleep over me do not worry about me mom and i think it's because in part she knew how much i did but I, I was definitely a warrior. So I can relate to that, Miss Debbie Reynolds. I can totally relate to being a warrior. So we are two peas in a pod in that one, that's for sure. You do have such a lovely energy. Thank you so much for chatting about some very serious topics too. Addiction, um, body image, um, this whole energy of worrying and and as a mom, you know, giving some perspective as a mother, I think that really helps the, those of us who are moms, especially mothers of daughters, recognize uh, ourselves not to be so hard on ourselves because that really doesn't help. 
and we're not going to know everything and we're not going to know the right things to say and do all the time and they are going to push us away and we just have to be there so that when they're ready for help that they have to get their own help that they will reach out to us and we will be there we just have to make sure that they know that we're still here even though we're not in their face every day that we are here for them i think that's a powerful message and a takeaway from this conversation with Debbie Reynolds and the afterlife. So if you haven't already done so, make sure that you go check out the channeling video with, D with uh, Carrie Fisher as well. Remember, at Above Life Channel, the goal is to inspire your spirit and fill you up with hope. I hope that we have done that today. It is a your life, so go live it. Thanks for being here. Be sure to like, and share this video with others you think would benefit. And be sure to click that red bell to subscribe and get notifications when there's new weekly channels every week.